get joy, joy, thinking about what he's done for me. I get joy, joy, thinking about what he's done for me. It's in my hands, my feet, I'm talking about what he's done for me. I get joy, just thinking about what he's done for me. I get joy, joy, thinking about. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome again to our Wednesday Bible study. We really hope that you have been studying along with us, helping to learn a bit more about who God is as revealed in his word. This series we're in right now focuses on the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we're starting with Abraham and learning a bit more about how this great patriarch, the father of the faithful, the patriarch of the of the Hebrew nation got to where he was, how he grew from where he was in the beginning when God called him to the man that we look to as the picture of faith. We are right now in the book of Abraham in this in the book of Genesis looking at Abraham and, and just to recap a little bit, God called Abraham or Abram to a land where he would be told to go. And he told him, you go. Well, he wound up taking Lot with him. And we'll see that that doesn't go too well for Abram when he took Lot with him and God didn't tell him to take anybody with him. Uh, they go to Canaan and then the famine came and they went to Egypt. And on their way to Egypt, Abram turned to Sarai and said, listen, you're a good looking woman and these Egyptians are going to kill me and take you if they think you're my wife. So tell them you're my sister. When the Egyptians realized this ruse, they, they sent him away with much substance. Get out of our land. Here, take this and go. Soon, strife between Abram and Lot's herdsmen uh, because of the, the scarcity of resources in the land. So having been given the choice, Lot pitched his tent toward Sodom. Abram said, we be brethren. We ought not to be quarreling, especially in front of the people of this land. You choose which one you want. If you go left, I'll go right. If you go right, I'll go left. This shows us a bit of the character of Abram because as the elder, as the one that God actually called, he had the choice. He could have said, this is my area, you go over there. But he allowed his nephew to make the choice. So Lot pitches his tent towards Sodom. Soon, war broke out in the region and Lot was taken captive. Now Abram, at over 75 years old, rescues Lot and brings back much spoil, which he refused to keep. He allowed all the other kings that he fought for that had been conquered to take whatever spoils you find. But what he did before he left, he gave a tenth of what he had to Melchizedek, the king of Salem and priest of the most high God. He gave him a tenth of of all that he has. Here's an example of the gratitude of Abram. So God renews his promise that Abram would father a great nation. He speaks of his lineage in terms of the dust of the earth and the stars in the sky. But since he has no child, Abram thinks that his servant born in his house would be the heir. But God promised that his seed would come from his own loins. Let's review God's promises to Abram. He says, I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. Picking up our study in Genesis chapter 16, beginning at verse 1. Now Sarah, Abram's wife, bare him no children. 
and she had a handmaiden, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold, now Jehovah hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian. After Abram had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. So 10 years had passed since Abram and Sarai returned from Egypt. 10 years since the covenant was made with God, still no heir. God is teaching Abram a lesson. Look at verse number four. And he went in unto Hagar and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarai said unto Abram, my wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. Look at this. Sarai is blaming Abram for her plan. Look at verse six. But Abram said unto Sarai, behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. All right. Note, people, we can never get it right when we try to help God. No doubt the time was a test to see how faithful they were. Sarai failed first, but Abram joined into the plan. She's the one that said, take my handmaid. And he went right along with the plan that she concocted. Then when Hagar got pregnant, Sarai got upset and blamed it on Abram. Look at verse number seven. And the angel of Jehovah found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way of Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence cometh thou? And whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. And the angel of Jehovah said unto her, return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of Jehovah said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of Jehovah said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because Jehovah hath heard thy affliction. And he will be a wild man, his hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of Jehovah that spake unto her, Thou God seest me. For she said, I have also, I all I have have I also here looked after him that seeth me. Wherefore the well was called Be'er Lahoriah. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagar bare Abram a son. And Abram called his name which Hagar bare. Ishmael. And Abram was fourscore and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. Now, at 86 years old, Abram finally becomes a father, but this is not the heir of promise. Sarai treated Hagar mean and got her so upset that she ran away. But she was out in the wilderness about to die and the angel of the Lord came to her, told her she was by a fountain of water. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to go back and submit yourself to Sarai. The child you're bearing is going to be a son and his name shall be called Ishmael. And I'm going to multiply his seed also. So God gives Hagar some encouragement to go back and help and, and allow Sarai Sarah to still be her mistress and allow the child to be born 
in Abram's house. Now, the impatience of Abram and Sarai called the child, caused the child Ishmael to be born to Sarai's handmaiden Hagar. We know that waiting for the promise to be fulfilled is the hardest part. We can believe the promise as firmly and as confidently as we can, but the longer it takes to come to fruition, the more our faith has to kick in and help us to hold on to the promises of God. And that's, that's the way Abram was, and that's the way we are. So when we see things that we know are not right in our lives, we still just have to wait on the Lord. So being mistreated, she fled, but God saved her and promised to bless her and multiply her seed as well. No doubt. Abram told Sarai that God said the heir would come from his loins. When we don't know God's plan, it's easy to make the wrong decisions. And unfortunately, that's the problem that we're facing daily uh, in our lives and in the religious world, that people that don't know what God wants, don't know what God means, do and say and, and act the wrong way. Picking up at Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham, Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect, and I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. God always reinforces his promise to Abram to keep Abram encouraged so he will not lose heart. And that's what the word of God does to us. It reinforces the promises of God whenever we begin to feel weak and, and our faith begins to fail us. Verse three, and Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called, shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, thou shalt keep my covenant therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with that money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. So we see that circumcision was just a sign reminding the men that we have a covenant with God. Verse 14, and the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. All right. Instead of his name being Abram, a high father, he was called Abraham, father of a multitude of nations. Again, God also renews 
his covenant and promises of land and many descendants with Abraham. God also introduced circumcision as a sign to, that Abraham's seed has also entered into the covenant. Verse 15. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall, be, shall her name be. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. And he left off talking with him and God went up from Abraham. All right, so God is gradually revealing his plan that still left room for faith from Abram, from Abraham now. First he said, you're gonna be the father of many nations. Abraham said, I ain't got no kids. Maybe it's going to be one of the servants in my house that will be the recipient of the promise of God. God said, no, this heir is going to come from your loins. So when Sarah said, take Hagar, maybe Abraham thought, well, maybe this is how God is going to do it. Then God finally comes and tells Abraham, no, it's going to come from you and Sarah. Now he's laughing. I'm 99 years old. And Sarah is 90. No doubt he's thinking we've been trying this since we were in our early 20s and we don't have any children yet. But God said, I'm going to fulfill my promise. He changed Sarah's name to Sarah and told Abraham she shall be the mother of his child. His intentions now are clear. You know, it's encouraging to know that even the father of the faithful had a weak faith in the beginning. All of us have a faith that needs to grow and it grows through testing. Now, 99 years old and sure that the promised child will never come through Sarah, he asked God to let Ishmael be his heir. Here is clear evidence that we need to learn as much about God as we can. Abraham didn't know God that well and thought that his time was running out. However, we also see that God saw him weakening and he promised the child this time next year. I'm glad God knows our limitations. He was not going to keep stringing Abraham along. He was going to finally tell him by this time next year, you're going to have a child. You waited this long. I called you when you were 75 years old. You're 99 now. Wait one more year for me and I'll come through like I promised. I hope you're learning a bit about God and about how our faith needs to grow and can grow and actually does grow through our testing. So when we see problems in our lives and we see things going against us, we need to recognize that this is just another exercise for me to show God how faithful I am to him. I believe him, I trust him, and I'm going to wait on him. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for so much for tuning in and studying with us, many of you week after week. We hope that you will share these lessons with others, your friends and acquaintances. Help them to know that there is a word from the Lord 
and we can learn some things even from these ancient uh, Old Testament characters that we can use in our lives on a regular basis. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, we pray you'll be careful and be prayerful. God bless you. I get joy, joy, thinking about what he's done for me. I get joy, joy, thinking about what he's done for me. It's in my hands, my feet, I'm talking about what he's done for me. I get joy, just thinking about what he's done for me.